this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Trekel Professional Artist Supplies or Trekel if you're from the country. So go to trekel.com, T R E K E L L.com. Use the code WTD10 at checkout and get 10% off of their brushes, panels, and apparel. Super easy to remember. It's not that hard. Thanks to them for sponsoring us. Enjoy this week's episode with our friends Tamsin Smith and Emilio Vialba. Hell yeah. There's no social anxiety for me, like, coming over here. Like, I know the (laughs) drill. We're going to sit down, talk Mm. for, like, 30 minutes about, like, you know, our week or weekend, and then just get get right to it. And then it just (laughs) organically, we start talking about anything and everything, and and very abstractly too we we get in conversations just about lines and squiggles and we're like well what is this squiggle like is this cool is it like what you know what i mean we just it's weird Uh, but (laughs) and it's abstract you know it's it's cool it's 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 good it's a good sunday squiggle Mm -hmm. talk yeah Yeah. All right, welcome to Waiting to Dry, everybody. The most entertaining, least informative art podcast you'll ever hear. If you start to say anything too smart, we'll cut you off. So. <laughs> uh, my name's Sergio Lopez. I'm Josh Lawyer. And we have Emilio Vialba back on the podcast, mm-hmm. along with Tamsin Smith. <laughs> oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Good to be here. Uh, All right. Yeah, so... Right now, you guys, we're we're in your guys' your house. Matt Gonzalez's flat. Matt Gonzalez's. Flat. Oh, okay. <laughs> For some reason, I thought both of you lived here. Um, I I'm I'm here frequently, uh-huh. and it is a definitely fun spot for um, art making. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Sundays are usually full full of friends and general revelry. And uh, Emilio and I have been doing some collaborations here. So yeah, it's it's super awesome. The our collection is a bit mind blowing, uh, and yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a, an amazing area to come and hang out. And I mean, I've known Matt and Thames now for a few years, and uh, every visit here is unbelievably inspiring. And you know, Thames and I have been painting for a little while now. And we've also mm-hmm. been well, even before we started painting together, we were talking about painting together for for quite some time and when it finally started to work out you know just like any sort of collaborative effort or mm-hmm. collaboration you know there's like you know the not I, I wouldn't necessarily call it the trial run but it's like the the formative stages like well what are we doing here early and, dates mm. yeah totally <laughs> it's like any any meeting where you know you're gonna have like you're trying to get to know each other but we were just mm-hmm. trying to get to know each other uh on a on canvas you right. know like yeah, yeah paint strokes and we were also trying to do it in a different way i guess trying to be not necessarily unique to be unique but just you know create something that was us or whatever Mm. um and tamsin and matt actually have a a studio a proper studio space Mm -hmm. um in soma right Mm -hmm. um and we started painting there together and then uh a few months ago we uh decided to move it here um and it's just been really cool and relaxing now here it's in the just lighting. a party yeah That's totally great. <laughs> i mean like today started drinking at 11. nice know, mm-hmm. drinking Day before drinking. painting yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so, so have you guys have either of you guys done a collaborative kind of thing like this before or is this pretty new yeah um well at the last modern eden group show mm-hmm. uh tamsin had uh, three paintings in the show and and so did Matt. Matt had two pieces, uh, I believe two pieces. And uh, and then that's where Tamsin and I first had a collaborative collaborative works. Um, and but that yeah. was the first time I had painted with anyone. I've worked on collaboration. I mean, well, Emilio and I collaborated to the extent that he is the cover artist for both of my first collections. I'm a poet. Uh-huh. So we've been sort of playing together and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm so inspired by the um, the visual work that he, um, that he produces. But we hadn't, uh, yeah, up until the Modern Eden show, we hadn't actually picked up brushes together. 
So huh. yeah, yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. The uh, the the covers. That's how. Yeah, I guess we have been working together for I, just creative conversations every time we meet. Really, right. um, and but it's usually like you know. To, to, um, parts coming together to a whole mm -hmm. as opposed to wow we're working on the it's not like you're do you do the cover i'll do the poems on the inside right. it's mm -hmm. like okay we're you know here's our little pile of paints and our pile of brushes and there's the canvas or the slab of wood right. and let's mm -hmm. um let's figure out what we're doing so it's been really fun the first two that we did were more a combination of our styles and kind of capturing our different personalities, but in the same space. And mm -hmm. Emilio had this wonderful idea for how to, as he said, create something that's us, not right. you and me together, but um, something that neither one of us would have created on our own. And mm. uh, that's been really kind of liberating, but also constraining in a, in a really totally. interesting, challenging way. Right. Is mm -hmm. that is that because you can't lean on the things you feel comfortable doing? Is that a big part of that? Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I think that's a something that comes up every time is mm -hmm. the challenge of the limitation and uh well, I guess we could talk about what it is that what the rules are. Yeah. So going just going back to what we were talking about, look when I you know, she did a book of poems and then I did the cover for it. So there's mm -hmm. a collaborative effort there right so in a painting i feel like it's very similar when people collaborate it's like you paint the tiger i'll paint the human or right. whatever right mm -hmm. and it's very obvious mm -hmm. that who did what right mm -hmm. and so we came up with this idea of collaborating uh where it's an exercise almost and uh so the rules are uh we can only use the drawing alphabet i guess which is vertical line horizontal diagonal going from left to right diagonal going uh right to left mm -hmm. and then uh, uh c curve and the s curve okay mm. so we and then we just rotate so we just do that over and over and huh. so we alternate so mm -hmm. i'll do verticals and she'll do horizontal and then i'll do diagonal and then diagonal and then c curve s curve and every once in a while we'll throw a little wrench in there Mm -hmm. and make it even more difficult or easier <laughs> or whatever so like for instance today's exercise that we added was we did a dice roll for how many vertical lines you know so like mm -hmm. we did okay. a roll of dice i got three so i did three vertical lines and mm -hmm. she got six so then she did six horizontal uh -huh. and uh we even tried to <laughs> roll the tie to see how many times we rotate the canvas but we rolled four so <laughs> yeah it was like the same <laughs> yeah exactly so, so <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, with that kind of being the rules, are you guys trying to like come to a conclusion as far as like how do you know when it's finished? And we, yeah, we talk about that every time. Right? We <laughs> Isn't have that no the idea. age old question mm -hmm. for any artist, yeah. right? Today, for instance, the brilliant plan was like, I got it. We're going to finish them. And then we got here and we're like, this, we have, yeah, it was. It's huh. frustrating, but it's amazing that I think what the best part of them is being able to come back to them a week later, two weeks later, mm -hmm. and then look at them after, you know, a little time and, and be like, holy crap, like we actually created something that's, mm -hmm. it's, it's there. I think when, when, while we're making it, it's sort of difficult to step away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, coming back to it two weeks later, a week later, it, I, I mean, for me especially, I, I get blown away every time. I mean, I feel like I could say that because we're in a collaborative effort. If there were my paintings, I wouldn't be saying something like that. It's, <laughs> you know, it is an exercise in trusting the process. Right. That, you know, even if we are going back into something we really like, just trusting that it will evolve and that will be interesting too. You know, to not mm. be too precious with, oh God, you know, it's it's really pretty now, let's Let's right. back off. If you if you haven't done the C curve and the S curve, you got to go back and right. go back in and do them. And it was fun before you got here. We had uh, we had three of them just sort of stacked up in sequence, just so that we could stand back and look at them. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was kind of amazing to see them all together, like gates in a garden, and they're all in conversation with one another, but bending in different directions. Some mm -hmm. sort of speak to different eras because of the color choices. Uh, you know, some are have more figurate el figurative elements. Some are very abstract, but um, 
there is a, uh, you know, it'd be like a, a, a book of haiku. You know, there's mm-hmm. a similar format, even if each one is uh, evoking a different feeling or about right. a different season. And, um, yeah, there's a nice wholeness to them, even though each is, is distinct. And when you put in these marks, are you guys thinking about kind of those things like what emotion is this mark evoking or what is this doing to the overall composition? Like, are these things that are, are going in your mind? I'm just trying to figure out kind of the, Oh, it's almost like I'm, you guys are messing with me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, uh, there's so many things I think as artists, you kind of, you, you like think about when you're creating work. And it's almost like even the fact that when you collaborate with a work, my biggest fear would be the ego of the artist and kind of the mashing of styles would cause that. But you guys have kind of thrown that to the wind. I, that's almost why the exercise was sort of designed was a way for us to not have that be a factor, which is almost mm. impossible still mm. because mm. you make a mark and the only time we're not like pre it's not predetermined in a way where, you know, we, the reason it's or the way it's set up it's Mm -hmm. almost impossible we're not telling each other what to paint you know so it's impossible to get the painting that you want out of it and Mm -hmm. i think that's the point almost for me at at least it is like i I really want them we were we've been talking about this a lot too is like redesigning i don't know or it might not sound right but you know we're creating a new beauty right Mm -hmm. like quote unquote it's not we're we're it's not trying to bring the our history of what we think is beautiful or mm-hmm. you know what our experience of what aesthetic is or our aesthetic again easier said than done it's you know even in a vertical mark you can throw a little bit of a curve in that mark in mm-hmm. that vertical mark and it's you're tweaking it right Correct. it's mm-hmm. not I'm, it's not a computer just doing a vertical perfect mm-hmm. vertical mark or whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah yeah i think it keeps it it feels very fresh and limber. I mean, I think a lot about John Cage and his uh, mode of composing with the I Ching, mm-hmm. where it's um, it, it's almost philosophy as much as it was, you know, a lot of the compositions you could barely call them music. There's certainly sound or lack of sound. But uh, to to take your ego out of the desire to have it be beautiful and pleasing right. in a way that is it adheres to what people expect from you. Right. You know, there is, totally. I mean, Emilio in particular has a very distinctive style to to be able to kind of just step back from that and um, and play in a sense without, without feeling like it needs to be one thing or the other. Uh, I, th- I mean, to me, I have less of an established career in the in the visual space, so it's sort of easy for me to just play. That's kind of what I do every time I, I paint. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think there is that there, and there is something of that emotion that I think you feel. I'm just looking at this one piece we did just in the you know 45 minutes before you guys came, which is just black and white. Mm-hmm. And so, right. of course, there's naturally quite a lot of gray in there. Mm-hmm. And it's just so, um, it feels so kind of innocent and open and inviting in a way that I don't, I could never have left that much white space in something that I made. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's still raw canvas that you see through. Right. So, it's uh yeah I, I i think it's really an eye opener it's been an eye opener for me as as an artist and the hope is that that will transmit to people looking at it and that they'll also feel that same sort of invitation to maybe not get stuck so much on what you know what do, what am i supposed to think about what i'm looking at and just mm. sort of feel some pure um good energy which is what i think does pop from these there's so much energy and movement in them I think uh, for me, uh, especially with people, like, let's just say we have these works up and, you know, these are, this is only our fifth piece now. So we're still really new into this direction or whatever, Mm -hmm. but, you know, we've been painting, some of them have layers. Like for instance, the one in the living room has six, I think today was our sixth session on it. Um, And these probably have three or four on them. Um, And then... Or maybe that one has two. But anyway, you know, conceptually, you know, visually, they might not be like, quote unquote, pretty, whatever, because they're not, 
necessarily pre-designed or predetermined or mm -hmm. I'm not saying that ab all abstract art is, but you know, there are moments when you can, you know, do a mark or something that's not in our restriction or whatever to, to be able to edit the painting very quickly or mm -hmm. clean it up or finalize it. You know, our, we're still maybe kind of trying to figure out what our refinement process might be. Like we don't, we're kind of just in it right Do now. Do we have right. level two rules for? Yeah, <laughs> totally for like finalizing. Hmm. But I think what's going to be really unique about them is after we have 10 or 20 of them, um, and also the evolution, you know, with time and whatever that the experience will, will definitely get a little bit more mature. But I think what's going to be cool is for people to, to read about it a little bit and, you know, see the process and just understand what we you know our limitations and just kind of know just that little simple background mm -hmm. and then we're like oh they're only using these six characters right mm -hmm. um and then they look back at them and they're like oh yeah they're, they're all there mm -hmm. so uh sometimes i think the fresh ones you know on a first day where it's we only did two passes on that and you'd be able to see everything very clearly all the layers like of how strict those you know the limitations are right. and also how creative you can be with those limitations too it's not like like i said earlier it's not a computer just right or whatever. yeah yeah i mean it is part of what um you know like pulling away the ego and kind of it almost seems like you're you're trying to build these muscles in a weird way uh not in a weird way but like uh different a, yeah uh it's like uh, you're trying to build habits of releasing ego or of releasing the expectations of those around you viewing your work. Is that also because that you see as a negative or, or is it just something that you want to pursue or? Um, I mean, I don't know if that was any part of our, the purpose of it, right? Like I think we like each other mm -hmm. and we respect what each other does. And I think, yeah, I mean, for me, just the chance to hang out with Emilio was so, oh, you know, thanks. why not? You know, <laughs> exactly. Why not? Let's, and this is what we do when we all hang out as friends. We make art, you know. Right. There's Matt's got collage parties mm -hmm. and we're, you know. And um, so for me, it was that appeal. But as we've gotten into it, you know, sometimes you just do things because it sounds like a fun idea. And mm -hmm. you come up with, oh, how will we do it? And, you know. But then when you start doing it, you begin to... As you're processing the experience, you begin to intellectualize it in a sense, right. and which is what's so great about being able to talk to you guys. It's helping us even process what we've begun to talk about just one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one mm -hmm. is, um, you know, if you think about it, a lot of people don't really know how to look at art. They haven't, you know, they didn't, in school, they don't teach it that much anymore. So mm -hmm. people will walk into a gallery and they don't really... They don't have the language. Mm -hmm. And so to say, look, it's, we'll teach you six, six strokes, six letters right. and, you know, enter this world and uh, you, you know, your eyes can begin to adjust and, and begin to take this in. And it, it does show the process, not because there's this, we want to be process painters or something like that. But right. in a way, it's it's an open invitation to understand the process of mark making. I mean, these are the elements in anything you look at. They're just not usually so raw and available. Right. So I think it may not have started this way, but it is an opportunity to kind of, it's not even open the kimono, but, um, you know, we were talking about how, you know, looking at somebody's art is almost like going to a country where you don't yet speak the language. Mm -hmm. You know, how right. do you begin to orient yourself? You know, boy, these are different smells and tastes and mm -hmm. the sounds of the voices are different. And you learn the curse words first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, right. These are our, these are our four letter words and, you know, come in and like get, get, a, get them in barrage form. Um, so I, I think that part of it is, is fun and I hope people will be interested in it. And, and then, you know, let the then it's up to the paintings. Let, right. You know, let they'll either work their magic or and you know tastes are different too. So I think it's it will be fun to see how people respond. I think we probably have our favorites, but mm -hmm. you never know when you're you can never pick out a work of art for someone else. You they, sure. it always surprises you what what people are drawn to. So. Yeah, totally. I definitely see that. Do you you guys see it kind of seeping in to um, <clears throat> your your guys's other art 
styles? I find myself resisting at seeping in. <laughs> <laughs> I am working much more abstract uh, in a more abstract space than uh, sometimes. It's definitely, I mean, I just started a new direction uh, for my own work. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, like it's definitely inspired it a lot. Um, and just being here once a week or as much as we can, uh, you know, being in, 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 surrounded by all this beautiful art at this apartment it's it's been amazing mm-hmm. um but definitely i think for me it's helped me with the the way i hold the brush the size of the brush now mm-hmm. um the looseness and the confidence of being able to just like put something down and let it be and remember that a week later it's gonna like i'm gonna like it you know right <laughs> um that is you- an interesting like thing that happens with paintings i find that i i'm stressed about because yeah. if i walk away from them and look at them a week later i'm like eh, there's nothing wrong with it yeah we're just freaked out a bit i think here what we've been doing is what's really cool and we don't do as i think as painters like solo painters or whatever not mm-hmm. collaborating what's been cool about uh, our process is that we have you know five minutes of painting and then right. we sit on the couch uh, while the other person is mixing paint Mm-hmm. ready to paint and we're staring at the painting for so long whereas like you know you always hear of painters that did that back in the day but mm. now when you watch people paint they're just constantly painting no one ever steps back or mm-hmm. takes that much time while they paint you know mm-hmm. so it's a lot of uh looking at the painting after it's done or after a couple of hours of working on it versus we're constantly stepping back and looking at it uh, and getting excited sometimes i'm looking at emilio Dessa, like, oh my god that's so good yeah. like i certainly don't do that with my own paintings <laughs> mm-hmm. i think that's, that's really cool too is like seeing the like i going back to the ego thing like every time i go up to paint i'm nervous i'm like man i'm gonna mess this up right now mm-hmm. you know and and Same. the only time you can there's that predetermined design is like a second or two seconds later you first we kind of pick the color well we know which direction we're gonna do right vertical or horizontal whatever mm. then we mix the color and then once we mix the color, I, it, well, at least for me, I'm like, okay, what size brush do I use now? And like, so there's all these little mini decisions that we're making. And then once you kind of commit, um, you know, there's, it's the commitment there. <laughs> um, got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is the color predetermined at all? Or Yeah, that- we, we mix it. But usually I feel like the color is... For me, at least, it's always been some sort of response to what the last choice was, That's right? probably the one Got thing it. we talk the most about is, yeah. ooh, I'm feeling yellow right now. Or, right. And, yeah, yeah today, but it, it's not always the same reaction. Sometimes it's something really different. Something Sometimes it's playing off of what's what's just been done. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I think the, for me, the, the process and, you know, the, the results... Every time I look at the paintings, I mean, it's it's definitely us, you know, and and uh, the process has been amazing, and uh, yeah, it's just very fresh for for me, uh, for sure, and and uh, it's. Uh, oh, we should talk about what we did last uh, last session. <laughs> which, which part? Uh, the oh yeah, so we we uh, last session we uh, I brought rollers like the paint rollers, uh-huh. okay. and uh, just because we have a larger piece out there. And we were we were thinking we really like the freshness of the smaller pieces because of the brush size, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, like, you know, if you have a massive painting, right. unless you have a roller or you're just filling in big space um, or using some sort of like old school towel, you know, you're not really getting that drag or whatever. So I brought a roller in, and it was yeah, it was cool. It was like a different uh, experience, and we were able to really mm. just play around with large scale coloring and. It kind of reminds me of, have you ever seen those, like, uh, guys that do, like, the Japanese characters and they'll use a mop oh, mm-hmm. yeah. on the floor mm-hmm. and For sure. it does these crazy uh, marks? Mm-hmm. We could have used a mop last time. We had <laughs> yeah. we had plastic down so it's not to completely trash Matt's living room, but right. I picked up... <laughs> Emilio had a proper roller he was using it. I I saw this little one. I'm like, oh, what's this little guy? He's oh, like, oh, yeah. that was 99 cents at the checkout. I said, I'm going to use this one. I'm shy. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but it was foam. So uh, the absorption level was totally different. So right. I kind of mm-hmm. added roughly the same amount of turp that, uh, <laughs> that Emilio did. Mm. I picked it up. It's like 
pouring down my arms. So I quickly get it over to the canvas and it's like spraying all over the place. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it, the effect was really kind of cool. So definitely mm -hmm. yeah, accidental. That. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So do you guys, I mean, it's what's interesting with this is it's almost like you guys are being different artists when you're creating it. Uh, Oh yeah, you're just, uh, you you mean compared to like what we normally paint? Yeah, because yeah. it's almost like I want to ask. You think you would do a different painting based off of a different collaboration with an artist? But because you guys aren't really almost being yourselves in this work, it's it's. I don't know if that question even applies. It's kind of um, well. I mean, I think that. It's like what I was saying earlier about the vertical line mm -hmm. or the horizontal line. You told, you know, you can tell everyone to draw a vertical line, not saying right. that everyone's vertical lines you're going to be able to pinpoint, like, oh, that's Josh's line, that's right. Sergio's line, whatever. Oh, you'd be you know? able to tell my line. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think there is a lot of character in our work mm -hmm. and, you know, with the limitations, you know. But right. um, I was thinking about that the other, or actually just today, where it's like, you know, if our friend showed up to the show, would they be able to, oh yeah, that is your painting, you know? Mm. And I think, I think that yeah, they think will so. be able to mm -hmm. sort of tell what, that, that we did it, you know? Hmm. I mean, it might be a little bit foreign and different, but not, not believable that it, that's, that we did it, you know what right. I mean? It's not, I don't know. I, I I see what you're saying. Like if even if I didn't pick up it was your piece, if someone pointed it out, I'd be like, oh, I could see that. Yeah, kind mm. of. Well, um, I, yeah, and even like I'm, I feel like with your mark making, like you specifically, I can kind of see even like the old older piece they have in the house. Yeah, it's like uh, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's Amelia's piece, uh, just because the way you put down paint do you find yourself trying to pull away from that when you're doing this work like not trying to do an emilio mark i don't know i i mean i think even if i try to make something different mm -hmm. it's always going to be you know me right, right? there's um, habits built kind of yeah. yeah or even in a way where it's uh it's my version of what i think a painting a brush stroke should look like or you know something right. i never tried before it's still my version of what i think it should look like or whatever. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, but yeah. And, and who knows? I feel like I've been learning a lot of different brush marks and discovering new things here and being Same. inspired by your work too. And your, your brush marks. Like every time Tamsin puts down a mark, I'm like, Oh, that I'm going to do that next time I get <laughs> next time I get the U or the C curve. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to do like every C curve I do now is from our first session. I saw her do some C curves. I'm like, those are the best C curves I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> And so I've been, it's, we, and we've talked about this too, is every painting has almost been like, we're trying to get back to that first painting. We have this like beautiful We don't have first the first painting. one here to show you, but <laughs> it's on this big piece of wood. It's yeah. like almost a palette. It's solid, but, um, and it's pretty, it was pretty old and dusty. We're like taking the, you know, spider webs off of it. Hmm. And it's just the, like the rawness of the, um, uh, the thing upon which we laid the paint so comes through that um, the texture of it. I think we kind of keep like yeah, it was oh, like an untreated that. like not yeah wood mm -hmm. right. It was like grainy still. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, but like kind of an orangey browny, you know, not not an art store. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like a, it, it wasn't a dumpster fine canvas, but it's like that kind of feeling to it, which just looked amazing. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Hmm. But anyway, we like, we, I think we hit it on that painting. And then after that, we're like, we got it. This is like what we're going to be doing. And I, you know, I've, we've been doing it now for a little while and I, like, it's, it's awesome. I look forward to coming or hanging out here every, every Sunday or as much as we can and, mm -hmm. and working on them. It's, it's been really cool. That's um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, abstract art is a thing that it, uh, it's like a thing that it doesn't hit me in my, like, uh, you know, like most art. It's like, it just kind of, there's like the initial attraction. I was talking to, um, I forget who it was. I think, um, uh, whatever. But, uh, I was saying that like, most art feels like this weird relationship where you start off 
by um, that like initial attraction you have to a person. And then from there you have to like, there has to be depth to it for you to actually continue enjoying that person or for the relationship to keep going. And I feel like a lot of art is in kind of that, that realm of like, there's something that initially draws you to it. And then from there you have to kind of, it has to stick with you. It has to like mm-hmm. build and become something more than, than just that initial reaction or else it kind of right. falls to the wayside. Abstract for me has always been like a weird, like I, some of it I really like actually. And, but uh, some of it I don't understand. I mean, you seem much more like eager and uh, into that style than me. I mean, uh, well, I think for me, well, for, for me, abstract art was sort of my intro to art. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. even before I became a figurative painter. Right. Uh-huh. So like abstract art was my, like my, my painting major, okay. you know? Um, and then I jumped into the figurative department. So it was always like my first love, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, yeah. And then for you, abstract art has always been part of your, right. right? Or it's always been part. Yeah. Even if I'm doing, I, I'll do like, I've painted this room, with, uh-huh. you know, and part of the the best part is like trying to replicate the amazing whatever happens to be up on the wall at the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but sometimes I would, I'll just, I would, so it'd be sort of a, you know, realistic scene, but then there'd be these wild abstract paintings on the wall, mm-hmm. which was almost kind of the, my favorite part. Yeah. I know exactly um, what you're and I like the balance and I like the balance of it. So, and I had done some abstract work, but in you, it's, you know, to me, it's like the analogy with, with poetry Mm -hmm. i like i'm not very into just sort of free range free Mm -hmm. verse you know i want there to be some uh metrical grounding Mm -hmm. i I want there to be some element of narrative um even dare i say rhyme you Mm -hmm. know or at least an attention to the musicality and the sound of how words hit each other right and those are those are roadblocks that seem like they should be limitations but they actually push you to devise things that, again, you would never have come up with otherwise were it not for that constraint. All right. So this process this of collaboration has been abstraction, but not in a, oh, I'll just kind of do whatever. Right. It, it has a rigor to it that... Uh, feels even though it's very sort of innocent and simple in a sense it's it's um sophisticated in terms of what we talked about with respect to you know setting ego aside or setting uh um techniques that you know to be that you can be successful with Mm -hmm. setting all of that aside but also just really learning something it is like learning a new language for me it's been that way and so i think as i as i do i I said i have to kind of resist wanting to go to the alphabet when i work on an abstract piece now because i don't want to replicate there's something so special about this work i don't i almost want it to be in its own zone but i do think that um it makes me assess and respond to the abstract work that I'm doing now differently. It's in, in a sense, as I've learned, you know, my eye has kind of keyed into experiencing disconnected marks mm-hmm. uh, and shapes and, right. uh, and, and to resist sometimes. I, I often will have the tendency to, oh, if I see something, I see a body, I see a form, I'll try to make that a little bit more apparent. Mm-hmm just to have some recognizable element. And I now find myself thinking, oh, do I, do I want to do that? Mm-hmm. Or do I actually want to leave it loose? Right. There's no right answer. It's just, again, continuing to, just more questions in the mind, which is so good and healthy. And Yeah. I mean, the, the thing that I find really, that I get obsessed about when I do like something that's abstract is usually when they really focus on the mark making and kind of trying to capture something within that, that I, I don't know, somehow connect with. It's, it's like what you're saying, how sometimes I'll see a picture of someone's studio on Instagram or something, and they'll, they'll have their easel. And then right behind it, there's just like a ton of splash of paint that for some reason keeps hitting the same spot of wall. And then it is like this weird abstract thing in the back. And I'm like, that thing is awesome. You need to like put a 
a panel there and just let that happen. Totally. Uh, or even just looking down at your palette right. sometimes, it's like, oh my God, I will never do something that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I, whenever I get obsessed with the abstract, it's usually someone trying to capture that, like, that unplanned whatever it's like uh it's like because even the background splashes on the wall it tells a story of the artist you know like it explains something of what the person was doing i've talked about it before like i I also love like uh when you see like it's not a good thing but like on a freeway if you see where a crash happened and you see like a swath of color and right. and and destruction it's like that mark told a story that's like not the you know it it's the cause and reaction, but the reaction is the mark, but it, it says so much with that one simple mark. That's so interesting. And how do you try to accomplish that, uh, through like, I think with that too, there's multiple layers to that story, right? Right. There's a narrative there that is a visually appealing because it's different out of the ordinary of it's breaking that routine. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if you're in an office all day or whatever, everyone's like classic cliche, like eighties example, everyone's wearing the suit or whatever. And then Mm -hmm. that one person is wearing a green suit or whatever. It's going to stick out, right. Something out of the ordinary. Um, But in this case on the freeway too, there's, there's, there's depth. That's what you were talking about earlier, impact and payoff. Right. So there's that impact of that new relationship and Mm -hmm. that's what you're really into. Right. The payoff is like how, how long does can it linger or what mm-hmm. does it keep you interested does it keep you pulled in and i learned that from a teacher uh john wentz mm-hmm. uh, when i was at the academy and he Shout always out. would talk about <laughs> yeah he would always talk about impact and payoff so mm-hmm. i think we talked about this last time too right it was like the impact of a of a piece is right when you first walk into the gallery right what happens when you look you see it from the distance mm-hmm. and then the payoff is does it hold up the closer you walk up to it and right. when you're right up to it, are you still there looking at all the details like, Oh, Oh my God, there's newspaper on the painting or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, something that keeps you in. Mm-hmm. There's more there than just that superficial impact. Right. That, and one's not better than the other. You know, they're just, they, they kind of need each other right, for sure. painting with bad impact, but amazing payoff, you know, from a distance, you didn't really grab your attention, but then you mm-hmm. go up to it and you're like, Oh, this is really cool. You know? So right. you could have it both ways. For sure. Um, and, uh, you know, without the impact, sometimes people won't even walk up to it unless you just stumble into, up to it or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like a slow burn song, you know. For sure. And I, I actually, I think that's with what we're doing here since, you know, we're layering so much of our, you know, the, our alphabet or our process on top. You know, at first they can, at an impact, they can seem pretty chaotic, you know. And mm-hmm. I think that's maybe why it takes me a week or two to come back and be like, wow, we actually have something Half because the there is a little bit of a slow burn there, like a mm-hmm. sleeper or whatever, where the impact and also the knowledge of the concept and where right. it's coming from and how it's fueled and everything that adds to it. And I always thought of that kind of stuff is like not as interesting where paintings need some sort of outside support. But, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I don't, not saying that these need that sort of support, but right. knowing that is just, it makes it so beautiful to me, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, that, I've always. That's always been. I mean, we've had conversations about that before, about how, how, because you're creating something that has the potential to live for a very long time. Right. Is there a responsibility to, to that, uh, to allow it to live without the outside knowledge that you guys are kind of producing? And I mean, it's, it's, is, is it, is it? Um, I mean, I don't. Is it a negative? If I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's a just a question. I no, no, I no. I, I know what you're saying. I think um, you know. I've been to museums and been able to figure out the secret of paintings without mm-hmm. necessarily reading them. You right. know, especially like for me, minimal art is has always been fascinating. Mm-hmm. I've never really had the guts to do it, and mm-hmm. I feel like this is the cl- one of the closest things I've gotten to being able to work as a minimalist. Mm-hmm. But we just keep layering, right? right. Um, but for instance, we were just talking about Ellsworth Kelly, which is one of like the more, uh, uh, tr- I guess, hypnotic or I don't know, uh, optical, optical illusion. Yeah, optical sort of minimalist painters. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been able to stare at his works for a while and be like, oh, I cracked the code. You know, after like five minutes or 10 minutes standing there, I'm like, oh, I see what he's doing here. There's mm-hmm. like an, a, it's not an easy pattern at times, but there is a pattern there and it's not the most difficult pattern, you know, but ours are a little bit more 
on the de Kooning side, I guess. Of it. Yeah, and mm. I think, you know, again, to go back to a, a poetry analogy, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times I'll encounter people that say, oh, I don't really get poetry. I don't know what, you know, they sort of inti- it intimidates me. And that's mm-hmm. probably because they were taught, okay, here's how you deconstruct a poem. And right. first you identify the metaphor and this, you know, and instead of what you should do, which is like, read it aloud let it wash over you see if it moves something don't don't get stuck on any particular lines and try to wrap your brain around them it's it's a primal art it's you know iambic pentameter is the the human heartbeat you know let it work its wonders on you in that way and then you can go in and begin to understand more about what the the poet is doing read about the poet get mm-hmm. some more sense of context right. but in a way if it can't charm you on the first date you know it then you know i i like to think that you can come in and respond i think so many people the first response they have to painting is color you know it's mm-hmm. sort of the most you know it's like oh i like people with blonde hair i like people with black hair you know it's sort of that first uh association Mm -hmm. and uh and they certainly have even though we've got the black and white one i think you've got all those tones i think there is something i hope that draws people towards them and then you know i do hope it unfolds and becomes a better longer relationship so i don't think i mean they're not um they aren't just exercises Mm -hmm. i i mean i i don't think abilio and i would would have invited you to look at them if we didn't feel like they they're i think they're lovely paintings for sure you know yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. i think uh i mean that being said you know uh you know the first time that we were painting together it's like okay let's see what happens but you know both of us are i think are very serious people when it comes to our our work or whatever like yeah even if we like you know and i enjoy like if, if I make something in my my personal work that's like somewhat comical, I'm still painting it very seriously. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's right. And we take our work very seriously. And for sure. And it didn't take very long for us to take this work very seriously and like want it to grow. You know, this is fifth painting in, and it's not like we're just trying to churn work out. We're mm-hmm. like trying to develop something, and this is who knows what it'll look like a couple months from now, or a year from now, or whatever. And for sure. Um. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's just the start of something that uh, I have no idea what it's going to be going to look like, and I think that's kind of part of the the fascination that I have with it. And I, you know, it's there's a little bit we always talk about. It. It's like for me, it's kind of like the we always talk about the danger in some of the yeah. marks, right? It's like oh, that mark is kind of dangerous, mm-hmm. like you know, or it's it's like putting a mark. W- what I do sometimes is okay, that's where I want my diagonal mark. Well, I'm going to do it the opposite, right? And I'm mm-hmm. going to go. D- up down or from you know from top to bottom so i'll change it i'll go bottom up and Mm -hmm. like little things like that to try to throw many wrenches in there um and just to try to see what happens you know and uh so there's so many little ranges of and variety within our the the limitation i guess which makes it pretty cool um but i guess that was just an example as to like how what inner dialogue it will be really interesting to see you know, how far this goes and how long we continue with it. And then to look back on the early ones, it's, you know, I, Matt, who's found paper collages now mm-hmm. are very intricate and complex, right. hundreds mm-hmm. and hundreds of little um, slivers of paper that he's cut by hand. When he will, we were, at, we were at Cheap Pete's at the framing store the other day. And this guy was like, Hey, I've got one of your collages and I live upstairs and he brought it down and it's from 10 years ago or, hmm. and, uh, it's very simple, simp, quote unquote, simple right. compared to what Matt is doing now. But he's like, Oh my God, I could never do this today. I love this. It's so <laughs> like, um, uh, so I think it will be fun when we look on the, the juvenilia and uh, <laughs> totally. I think there's going to be a freshness that yeah. we're maybe, I mean, we, I probably see in works like this right now where it's one layer in or whatever. Um, but yeah, I always appreciate that stuff. Even when I look at Matt's earlier work too, I'm like, whoa, that's five pieces of paper, but it's so mm-hmm. fresh. It's like seeing a really, uh, loaded brush mark or, you right. know what I mean? Something that's like, there's so much uh, weight behind the, those a couple those couple marks or whatever mm-hmm. um 
versus like when you know when people tend to uh you know progress or whatever it's it's more or whatever not saying right. that one's better than the other just different um for sure you guys ever find that you guys are kind of have different i don't know goals while trying to tackle a piece like well i think uh similar similarities and differences i mean i feel like we uh definitely color choices i mean we have different backgrounds so mm -hmm. like i think there's definitely colors that you mix that I probably wouldn't mix and vice versa too. <laughs> and we're constantly being inspired by each other's colors. I feel like, um, just because from, you know, like what you said earlier, I'm sitting over here, you paint something I'm like, Oh, that looks, that's really good. You know? And then vice versa or whatever. Um, yeah. Or what do you see, I guess, in terms of similarities and differences in our approach or like, is there ever a moment where you're like, I'm going to, I really want to do something in this area like this. And then, Emilio comes in and just does something there that you had the opposite intent of. I think I, at least speaking for me, I have so much confidence in Emilio <laughs> <laughs> that it's almost like whatever I mess up, he'll find a way to make it okay. <laughs> so I don't have that worry, but I also have really developed a confidence in the process. I mean, mm, there's sure. that piece mm. right there that no one listening can see, but you, the on the left. I love that piece. I've been staring at it for two weeks since we last met. And I I loved it. And a little part of me was like, oh, I hope we don't touch it. It's so good. But it's even better now, you know? Mm. And um, so I'd have, if Emilio had walked in and said, oh, let's just leave that, I'd have been great. But um, I that might have been the, I guess it was the second one we worked on. And uh, it was up on the easel. We're ready to go. It's like, okay, let's I feel like see. That's part of the. That, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely stepping out of the comfort zone in certain areas where you're like, why do we like it? We're mm -hmm. thinking about like, what is beautiful? Again, going back to that, mm -hmm. it's like, is our goal for them to be beautiful, right? Are they, the, I think the goal is to be a little, it's something different. It, right. Not to use the word exercise again, but this is a different type of method. Uh, I think it's very simple. It's very minimal, but I think it's very unique and it's something that only us can produce. You know, if we were to do this, pro if I was to do this project, one of you guys, you know, it, it would be similar, but it'd be, com you know, it'd be our own unique take on it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can and, release that ego. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, de I mean, definitely it's, it's, uh, that's part of it. I think is like when, Tamsin goes up to paint. There's nothing I can do about it. I don't mm -hmm. tell her what to paint at all. She doesn't tell me what to paint. I mean, there's been moments where we're like, yeah, like we ask each other, like, do you think blue? And it's <laughs> like, yeah, I think blue is cool. <laughs> like, or or Amelia, Amelia will say, uh, I think you're supposed to be doing S curves right now. Oh yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> that's get been distracted. Our, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, it's been there's no like real, you know, that's part of, that's that's difficult and it's not difficult too you know just kind of sit back and let it let it happen and then it's your it you know your turn's going to come up so then right. you have your time to sort of work on it mm. um but i was thinking today i was like well what if we do two in a row and i'm like well that's just you're just adding another you know you're you're like because i was thinking about that what if we did two in a row would that change the look of it but it wouldn't you would just have you know two marks that are overlap that are that are yours mm. um I think uh, f for anyone that's painted with oil or with heavy oil, I think one of the more difficult parts that we kind of had to figure mm -hmm. out in the beginning, especially since I'm not that much of an abstract painter, more now with my new paintings, I'm allowing colors and paint to mix, mm -hmm. overlapping and uh, and finding beauty in like sort of the, the ugliness of the paint mixing right. together, right? Um, and I think, you know, I don't even know if we've even thought about how good we've gotten at being able to overlap wet on wet mm -hmm. without it becoming muddy. Right. Remember our first couple of larger works, so like at the end of the day, it was like, we have to stop <laughs> painting because we just, we were just scraping paint off, like mm -hmm. with a brush. We weren't even adding paint on it. Right. <laughs> and now I feel like we can paint the whole session without mm -hmm. even worrying about that. Just because we've like learned how to layer paint properly and whatever. That's mm -hmm. cool. Um, without thinking about it, that's just sort of happened. <laughs> So with this like idea of redefining beauty, like uh, what goes, do you guys I mean, put any thought into how you're going to define that? Or are you just kind of trying to stumble upon it? You know, in a sense, the, 
I haven't really thought about this, but it was, yeah, I was think, gonna... thinking about, you know, this is not a pipe, right? It's a painting oh, of right. a pipe. You know, right. the... Y- the, the, this whole conversation about you know what is 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 art supposed to elevate mm-hmm. is it supposed to capture beauty is in a way to me this feels so truthful because it's sort of how you go about life like you use the tools that you have you try to make the best mark you can on the people around you and the things that you do whatever your job is or mm-hmm. you know responsibilities you have and some stuff shocks you because it goes so perfectly and you did it in a really amazing way and sometimes it's like the i would think about my own life some of the worst things that have happened to me have led to the best things i would just Mm. never have gone to that school or taken that job or and um so in a way to me they feel they are beautiful because they feel so truthful you know and i also i embed like my friendship with emilio it's like this time we get to spend together and it's i feel like at least for me it may be my projecting but Mm -hmm. there's so much beauty just in kind of this how simple it is just to make a few marks with different combinations of of paint and and there it is it's um it's like an op- it's an open uh you know we live in an era where we're redefining what beauty is and, right. and everything else and um i think yeah. that's a healthy thing no and i think to to add to that too i don't think it's our goal wasn't to redefine beauty or anything like that uh-huh. right that wasn't like the the purpose of the exercise it's it would be like trying to showcase our dialogue or our friendship but we're just doing it via canvas or whatever so it's not like it's necessarily i mean yeah we are putting it up for people to enjoy it but um it's not a visual podcast the, yeah it's right like, <laughs> mm, yeah, exactly yeah i wouldn't it's not like we're trying to like you know if we were trying to make our relationship beautiful or something like i don't know even know how you would do that but you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying it's like mm-hmm. it, it just is what it is like it's you know they're very unique images and at the end of it we're just going to have a statement of like let's just say our volume one was like 2019 or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, it's like the beginnings. And then, you know, just to see like this evolution of, of the relationship and the, the dialogue, I guess. Um, and just to see where it goes and who knows, you know, maybe we throw a different exercise in there and it's not just what we've been doing with the drawing alphabet, you know, it doesn't, that's not what's making it unique really. You know, the uniqueness is the, the working collaboration the way that we're collaborating i guess and it just gels it works if it didn't work we would probably stopped painting a long time ago right like collaborating i mean there was something there that we both wanted to to work with and and believe in each other and trusted each other uh from day one but i know i got sidetracked but it you know originally it wasn't necessarily to create something beautiful necessarily (laughs) it was just let's hang uh, out and paint yeah totally and then it just (laughs) and then it just turned into a serious thing just because that's just naturally how we are you right know? It's, it's like okay dilly dallying was good for the first 10 minutes it's like let's get down to the nitty-gritty yeah. <laughs> mm. as nacho libre would yeah. say no small, no small talk on the canvas yeah. Yeah, seriously no that's that's so true yeah no small talk that'd be a good title for one of the pieces right? <laughs> uh so it almost sounds like this is like a capture of time of you guys being friends and spending it together do you guys end up having any kind of like outside stimulation while you're creating this work? Like, do you guys play music or, or anything like that? Or is it? Yeah. I mean, we have music here. I mean, Matt uh, and Tamsin both have uh, friends that come over. Mm-hmm. On we just the... had uh, Eric Antoine, who's a remarkable photographer mm-hmm. um, who has a show at Dolby Chadwick right now that mm-hmm. just opened on Thursday. He's visiting from France with his girlfriend, uh, Gisa, and they came by for a little while. Nice. And um, uh, another friend of ours were, were uh, publishing his next collection of poems. Mm-hmm. He was here to take a look at the proof, and uh, we've had other folks come by in the past. So, yeah, always, always music, That's almost cool. always wine. Mm. <laughs> does that outside in like uh the friends coming kind of if this is somewhat of a capture of you guys's friendship uh i mean no matter what it it, it would be that for you guys in a weird way because i don't know if you guys would be able to look at the piece without thinking of the the counterparts of the piece i mean but do you guys have 
that other like do people coming in does that seem to influence the work at all i mean i don't think it i don't see how it wouldn't you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like either yeah it influences one way or another whether it forces you to sort of rush that next move or uh um or hesitate or if someone's watching you and the right i felt a little under the gun today i mean it's like a one of you were painting and there was someone right next to you watching you make a mark and I was uh-huh. like, Oh boy. And I was not I was totally not into the color I had on my breast too, and it was getting really muddy. I was like, Oh no, I'm yeah. not looking so good right now. But Emilio is so sweet, he's like, No, I really love that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I I don't think there's one mark that I've ever been like, Oh, we gotta race. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just part of it. It's been a really hmm. cool um uh process for sure. Huh. Um, but yeah, I think all the outside influences have, have just been amazing. It's just part of it, you know, as part of like any sort of conversation, you know, whether uh, you're at a restaurant and mm-hmm. someone interrupts you to, you know, to ask what you guys want or whatever, you know, it's, there's a, there's a little, you know, speed bump or, or road bump or whatever that mm-hmm. um, adds to it. And, and it, again, it's, it's going back to like what we, th- everyone, you know, thinks of things as like good or bad it's so extreme and it doesn't necessarily have to be that way it just is what it is right Mm. just that is a document or a statement of what what we created at that time during this time and and uh i think that there's something in modern culture too that just celebrates sort of the lone genius the Mm -hmm. the lone artist and don't talk about how important you how much you learn from other people how amazing right. it is you guys are doing this show and you're sharing other people and you're also thinking about you know it's got your minds working and mm-hmm. you know to me that's what is there is no artist that isn't borrowing from the past that isn't influenced by what they're looking at so why don't we spend more time as artists creating and sharing right. and um and learning and growing, um, there's. I'm, I'm working on this little mini history on this drawing circle that Manuel Neri hosted in the summer of 1976 with his ex-wife Joan Brown mm-hmm. and three other artists um, using Mary Julia, the model, and uh, you know she produced 62 known paintings from this series with Mary Julia and David Mary and Julia and her you know on her own Mary Julia and Nick and and the there's so much to say about Joan Brown herself as an artist but really I I'm pretty fascinated by you know here you have one summer two people that used to be married to one another are now both separated from their current um, mm-hmm. spouses. They had a kid together. And, uh, you know, one of them's current girlfriend and muse is there as the model and three other painters that are less well-known, but they were all friends hanging out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those stories to me are fin- incredibly interesting. You right. know, it's, um, you know, when you, you look back in history, you know, during the lost generation, all the writers that were going to the same bars, drinking the absinthe and, right. uh, you know, Greenwich Village, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, poets and painters all intermingling. And in a sense, this is this is what people lament when they worry about the, don't just worry, but they experience the rise of price of rents in the Bay Area. And it's right. that much harder to to hang out and, um, you know, share space with people. So, I mean, to me, there's something so dear about the fact that people come in and and hang out and make stuff and people that aren't artists come in and they collage. We had um, uh, a lawyer that works with Matt here with his daughter who's drawing in the corner Mm. and and he's making a collage and his wife's Mm. making a collage. And I mean, that's like why, you know, that's what makes life fun right. and interesting so i think to be able to actually introduce this notion there is something certainly as as artists that we're gaining from this experience but i think there's also a story to be told about you know it's it's i i just feel so lucky that i found a friend who's willing to do this with me because a what a wonderful way to spend time together and and grow as artists together mm-hmm. and separately but just to you know it's really dear no I, I mean it's been an amazing uh time for me too and i was just at uh, the last part that you were just talking about it just reminded me of 
of, or maybe think of musicians, you know, musicians do it all the time. Right. They're always collaborating. They're always have people over and it's, you know, jamming. Yeah, totally. Exactly. And, you know, you don't really see that in, in painting that much, especially nowadays. You did obviously before in those little circles and, and exactly. people get together and talk about what everything, you know, and, right. and uh, it's impossible not to be able to contribute to someone's work just by talking to them, you know, mm. or, or vice versa, you know. Yeah. That's yeah, I mean, it's like the ripple effect, right? A little shove mm -hmm. is gonna yeah. like you're gonna feel it later, even if it's like, or you might not feel it later, but it, there's still an impact there, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah the 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 only reason I I like cringe at the idea of having people around me when I paint is the like the how you were saying someone was looking over her shoulder. That's like the worst feeling to me. It's like this yeah. weird like I can't even think right now. My mind. Well, it's I mean, almost it's, stage fright, like a public speaking or something. I, I hate. <laughs> it's vulnerable, you know, yeah. for sure. Um, uh, you know, I've been teaching art for uh, nine years now at mm -hmm. uh, college level. So, you know, I'm kind of used to like people watching me while I paint, but definitely not abstraction. You know, I'm not teaching how to, I don't know how to paint abstractly. You know what I mean? Like I'm right. just learning it as we go right now. And uh, so... You know, if I was doing a, a portrait painting, I would probably feel a little bit more comfortable. Even then, I wouldn't feel comfortable uh, experimenting or going, right, doing a, a, and even though I do that, I try to experiment during my demo sometimes, um, and it just goes wrong, you know? And, and the days it goes wrong, I, I, I just kind of, I, I've already made that choice, and I think making the choice to experiment was difficult enough, so the times that I've made like really bad demos, I kind of just brush it off. I'm like, well, and I tell the students too, I'm like, you know what? I tried to do something tonight and it just didn't work out the way I wanted to. There are some good moments, but Hey, like that's just what happens. You're not going to grow if you don't step out of that norm, you know, but it's um, probably a good lesson to see anyways. Yeah. In I, general. I mean, that's take what that shot. Says, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th yeah. there is this weird obsession on Instagram or whatever to like show all of your successes in the, in the studio, you mm -hmm. know, and you very rarely see the oops, the oops that people <laughs> yeah. have to throw away. For sure, um, can't chase those followers away. <laughs> 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 <I mean. laughs> At blooper, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, like if 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 a majority of young potential artists are coming up and Instagram seems to be a huge beacon for consuming work and everyone's just presenting the coolest version of them mm -hmm. and not the fails. It's, it can make this weird, like, um, kind of naive idea that artists, even good artists have to experiment and figure out things and then they might mess up doing so. Um, mm. sometimes yeah. you, you, um, share, on your stories like oh this one didn't turn out right whatever do you ever get like people saying they appreciate that yeah or they get <laughs> mad because they're like if that sucks and what am i doing you know? right yeah <laughs> i mean you have to be your a critic but of your own work right. i think in going back to that i mean this first five paintings is mm -hmm. sort of our like i don't know what you call it in the the work hours like the what are they the ten thousand hours or whatever right. like, mm -hmm. um this is that's this is that for us mm -hmm. like we're learning how to paint with each other mm -hmm. um and you know it might take us a hundred paintings before mm -hmm. we're like holy crap you know what right. i mean mm -hmm. or it might just take 10 paintings who knows but like it's it's the journey really it's not necessarily the pro like we're not really stressing so much uh, or at all really about the final product like there's moments where like oh like how do we finish it? But it's like, right. well, do we even need to worry about finishing it? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's, and that's kind of what we sort of, without really talking about kind of just happened today. We we're just like, yeah, let's just, let's just call this one done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we looked at it and we're like, you know, it could have been done any, at any time, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so it is really f for me and I'm, I'm sure for you too, it is, it is the journey, you know, mm -hmm. and it's the, I know everyone always talks about that. It's like, don't worry about the final product to worry about the journey or whatever. But in this case, you know, it's really true. I, I really look forward to, to showing up on Sundays and hanging out with Matt and Tamsin and having a good conversation. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, th I think I mentioned this last week, uh, you know, I don't really have like, there's no social anxiety for me, like coming over here. Like I know <laughs> the drill, we're going to sit down, talk mm -hmm. for like 30 minutes about like, you know, our week or weekend and then just get 
get right to it. And then it just mm-hmm. organically, we start talking about anything and everything. And and very abstractly too, we, we get in conversations just about lines and mm-hmm. squiggles. And we're like, well, what is this squiggle? Like, is this cool? Is it like, what, you know what I mean? We just, it's weird. <laughs> uh, but and it's abstract you know it's it's cool it's 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 good it's a good sunday squiggle mm-hmm. talk yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you find the conversation going abstract too it can i mean just because we're dealing with shapes you know we end mm-hmm. up like yeah we we talk about language and the the way that people perceive things and what is i don't know what's considered finished what's not like mm-hmm. i mean it's it's five hours like we talk about a lot of stuff it becomes pretty philosophical actually i really absolutely yeah. yeah we go deep mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> there there are times when i'm painting where i kind of lose track of time and i'm like zoned in like hyper in my own weird head doing what i'm doing and i don't know people call that uh whatever they call it. There's like some flow state. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, that like, uh, where you just kind of are just zoned out and just doing what you, it's almost like the equivalent to when you just are driving for a long period of time and you're like, all of a sudden you're home. Right. And you don't remember is doing this process. Does that allow you to get in that mindset or is it because it kind of is back and forth that, um, um, I mean, I think in retrospect, I feel like we've had, flow i think it has Mm -hmm. flowed but we are going back and forth Mm -hmm. so you're you don't have a lot of time to get in the zone especially get we sort of reestablished rigor with our rules Mm -hmm. um which meant there was a lot less kind of just filling in sometimes um but uh yeah we like yeah there's a lot of uh restraint i guess and 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 uh and in order to be able to just make five marks and then be like, okay, your turn. I, I right? feel like, like the the last couple of times I've painted by myself in my studio, I've been much more, it just like, Hey man, I'm just like, so enjoying moving <laughs> this paint around. This is really awesome. And mm-hmm. there's, and I, and it, it kind of in a confident way that is new for me. Mm-hmm. I think probably I'm just feeling looser. Cause it's like, Hey, I'm, making stuff with Emilio it's all like <laughs> totally groovy um so I think it it maybe it allows for, for at least in my experience it has allowed for a lot more flow even if that flow state it's it's we're pretty attentive we're attentive to what we're what we're doing mm-hmm. paying attention to the other person you know it's like improv yes and right. you want to you want to be there to support or to receive and um so you're always in that kind of second position right I f- I f- yeah i feel like uh on top of that i feel like what the difference is from you know you painting in your studio or, or uh me painting in my studio versus being in here at the studio usually uh which is what i was going to earlier you're in more of a of a tunnel vision sometimes mm-hmm. right and then i think that allows you to be in that flow state like creating a puzzle or putting pieces together um and here you know we are stepping back so much that i think it allows us to sort of break out of that so you know when you're in tunnel vision i feel like after four or five hours of painting or more you're sort of exhausted right mm-hmm. there's a point where you just you know, the ref- I end up staring at my painting for an hour after just to reflect and just to even see what I created. Right. Versus here, where every five minutes we're stepping back and soaking it in. So there's rest time and, and uh, you know, in and out. And, you know, and it's a different environment. You're not by yourself right. in a studio. Mm-hmm. So there's more stimulation. There's little breaks and whatnot. So. Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like... Uh... It's almost similar to like a what you guys are doing is almost like a conversation between two people through a limited vocabulary or whatever, mm-hmm. and then kind of I don't know letting a third party in on the conversation. Yeah, I mean the only people that have seen it are you know Matt and the people that cruise over here. Other than that, oh I guess we've posted a few like works. Yeah, but in not progress in a online, not but. in a like proudly displayed yeah right? it's, it's more like, like hanging out on a sunday <laughs> right right yeah yeah it hasn't been like put up for like judgment i guess in a way <laughs> right we're just like these are this is what we did today and uh you know very very proud of the works obviously um but yeah it's just not that wasn't necessarily the goal to begin with um 
And now we have an opportunity to actually be showing these works, perhaps, possibly. Exactly. Oh, yeah, mm. for sure. In uh, November. Nice. So we'll have like our first little EP, I guess we exactly. can call it. Exactly. Um, <laughs> oh, very right. good. That's, like, uh, that's not that far away. It's no. not. Oh, yeah. We got to get painted. Where's yeah. that happening? At uh, Adobe Bookstore. Nice. Back room okay. gallery. Yeah. Classic. Hmm. Yeah. So the, the first part of the show is going to be Tamsin's uh, second solo show there. Mm -hmm. Or, right? Yeah, First, I know like, I had other painter poets in last time. Yeah. So it was three of us. But so, yeah, it'll be solo work at the beginning and then halfway through, take it down and put the collabs up and have a little artist talk. And mm. uh, that'll be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Adobe Books, San nice. Francisco, <laughs> it's 24th <a> Street. <laughs> it's yeah. their 30th year. Yeah, for sure. Great community we'll, uh, institution. Pump that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Do what um, we can. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, so when you're there at Adobe, are you, are you going to like perform at all with your poetry? Is that, gonna be, is that part of it? You know, last year, because it was three painter poets, mm -hmm. uh, we had a reading. and They sound like superheroes when you say it like that. Paint, three painter poets. <laughs> painter poets. I like that. We should get capes. That's <laughs> a, that is such a good idea. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I'm, I'm excited about the artist talk and... Uh, you know, for the closing, yeah, we could, I mean, it's usually closing. It's fun to have a party. We have Chuck, Matt's brother's band, Novio Electrico. Novio Electrico is <laughs> so good. Download today or stream on Spotify. Right. What kind of music? Um, it's, uh, it's like Tex-Mex meets <laughs> California psychedelic. Wait, is Tex-Mex an actual music style? Uh, it is. Oh, I, in really? fact, wrote oh. a music review of the Novio Electrico album, <laughs> which you can find. It's really, it was actually really hard to write. I've never written a music review before. And I was, mm. you know, you want to make sure you're getting kind of the language right. And, oh. But uh, yeah, they're super fun, infectious uh, kind of Spanglish, you know, he's he bounces Spanish okay. to English to get the best rhyme, and right. they're really they stick in your head and they don't let go. They're mm -hmm. awesome. Cool. So awesome. yeah, maybe we'll yeah. maybe we'll uh, have a couple poems in the mix, but uh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do Do you write a lot? Uh, uh. I do write a lot. I write um, lately. I've been writing a lot of art reviews, mm -hmm. uh, which is. Uh, a w amazing thing to be able to do is just mm -hmm. to take the time to kind of process what you're looking at and and uh, speak it in a way to help maybe make that work more accessible or more uh -huh. heighten the curiosity and mm -hmm. also I mean that people don't write art reviews anymore and this Matt was the one that got me started because he writes them all the time sometimes we write together sometimes we write separately but you know you put all this work into a show right you know, maybe you sell some work, maybe your friends come, but then it comes down and you, and it was a huge, and then you sort of, you have the photos and things like that. But for somebody to actually take the time and say, wow, you really did something there and I'm going to spend, you know, my weekend writing about it mm -hmm. is such a nice, it's, I feel honored to be able to do it. But I think for an artist to get that, and we usually don't tell people, so mm -hmm. it's often like, boom a little like there you are in juxtapose so it's just a fun way to say thank you for sharing your art with us it's so great and then the poetry i'm uh uh also writing mm -hmm. kind of all the time not every day but uh yeah oh, yeah well, well you guys will have to uh well you've probably seen the uh covers of the their two books yeah i remember but, when we were at your house last time you were oh, like yeah, oh the so, painting, yeah. yeah the painting yeah the painting shows oh that's shows so funny her, her mm -hmm. book yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so I have two, she has two books now that I did the cover of, um, but the second one was a drawing, and then, uh, yeah. I don't know but, if I, I don't know if you had the second one when we. No, I don't think so. We can show so. you, I'll show, yeah. 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 It was yeah. a demo you did, right? That you posted yeah. on Instagram, and oh, yeah. uh, I was like, oh, No, man. it's your eye. I know, I was oh, like, yeah, that's, that's so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, yeah, because I think you just were doing it from a photo, and yeah. um, oh, okay. and yeah. I said, oh, I have an idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm. Yeah, it looks awesome. great. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the uh, yeah, I geek out on poetry a little bit every mm. once in a while, but I I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Nadezda Nadezda. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your last name? 
All I know is that there's the twisted, ma- uh, twisted matter on matter Instagram. On yeah. Instagram, we interviewed her, and she she's like, uh, she uses like old Russian poetry as an inspiration for her work, and it's it's really cool to see. Excellent. Uh, or I'm- Polish. Yeah, Not Russian. She'd probably get mad at that. <laughs> well, I think she does Russian poetry as well. Or, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are incredible Polish as well as Russian poets. So mm-hmm. I, she's she's working from a good mm-hmm. right from a good well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'll get you the book. So <laughs> now that I know oh, you like cool. it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Sergio, not so much. He's too cool for us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> Uh, it was interesting what you were saying though about you, the art reviews you do where you're saying like they're you see it like as a celebration for the art like as a, as a thank you whereas i i kind of think of it more as like uh i don't know like a criticism that normally uh, like i guess I, as artists we maybe have a different view of them but um yeah it's it, do you find yourself um ever having to feel like you need to um i guess like be nice in your reviews or anything like that or is it just more like an honest um sort of we celebration of what you're we they're you they're see. complete these are completely voluntary endeavors so I see. Okay. It, it's not a job no one pays for them so okay. i don't i wouldn't spend my time trying to comment on something that didn't excite me mm-hmm. so and i wouldn't want to write a there's so many things to do with my time. Why, why make someone right. feel bad if you <laughs> if it didn't work for you? Um, but also, if there are things I don't like, I try to just figure out what it is about them, you know. But um, uh, no, so we always write when it's someone that we really respect and we want to say something about what they're doing. We Matt and I have both written about Emilio's work. Mm-hmm. We had intended we'll often write separately, but then put the pieces together. Mm-hmm. And put and um, you know publish it as a as a joint review, but with Emilio we we both had written pretty much complete reviews mm-hmm. that were developed and said you know different complementary but different things, and uh, Matt when he he likes to finish his before he reads mine, mm-hmm. uh, and when he read mine he said God but if, why don't we just <laughs> it would be too hard to combine these anyhow. We've got two reviews. Let's give the guy two reviews. Yeah. <laughs> and so we did. Nice. And, um, yeah, I hope you liked them. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. Like, definitely honored. That's <laughs> cool. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Where are they published when they when you review them? One went in, Matt's went in Juxtapose, oh, okay, and mine cool. went in uh, Beautiful Bazaar. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Two cool Matt's. Both very cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so for you, has has uh, painting, like your own stuff, kind of slowed down when you're pursuing this? Or um, no, I've been uh, I still paint every day. Um, I uh, I've been working on a sort of like side secret project. I guess it sounds cheesy saying that, but um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I was kind of that took over the summer a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, no, I've been working on a new body of work um, and. Uh, teaching a lot still and um, what did sort of slow me down maybe at the beginning of the summer is I hurt my back um, mm. so I, I slipped a disc in my spine yeah, I so I wasn't that. able to really you know function at the level that I normally do in terms of just like movement and whatnot and also just the pain level was pretty heavy um, but yeah I'm working on a new body of work and uh, I have a, have a show coming up in April uh, at Modern Eden so 20, nice. 2020 Nice. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll have a. I'm I'm planning on having like thirty paintings. Maybe we'll see. Wow. Um, <laughs> only, but, only, only. only. <laughs> well, <I> just, <laughs> many paintings. I, I, yeah, I mean, most of my shows, I got you know, the owner always tries to get me to like fifteen or twenty, but I I just feel like I need to have that many paintings to make it worth for like people coming out. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like I don't. It's so nice. But just want to show show everyone a good time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a negative. It would be it's like, a, like if you go to a music concert, you would assume that they're trying their hardest to respect the the viewer. Yeah. You don't give them a performance that they can admire. I don't know if that's yeah. necessarily a negative to put their thoughts in my in your head when. The weird thing with artists is we perform in our studios and then we like slap it up 
Mm-hmm. I guess musicians are similar in albums or something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, the live performance is not live, right? I mean, it's right. not what, what we're seeing or whatever, yeah. um, the final product. But I think mm-hmm. that's what's beautiful about both mediums, you know, yeah. is they're different. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's the great thing about all different art forms. For sure. They all mm-hmm. have their pros and cons or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And do you, and are you painting? I mean, you've mentioned that you're painting more abstract in your, your work. I pa- I don't paint every day. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I have a day job mm-hmm. that keeps me busy in the day. Uh, but I will sometimes at the end of the day, Matt and I will meet in the studio or mm-hmm. I'll sneak in at lunchtime or something like that. Uh, and I will occasionally, I will occasionally, uh, like if I stay here, I'll get up in the morning and just a little bit of time on the, um, so I have lots of places I can paint and, uh, and um, get it in. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, I have the same thing with painting as I have always had with writing, which is I get really itchy if I'm mm-hmm. not doing it and especially if there's a piece that i've got up that i'm not very happy with i really want to get it and just get it in better shape (laughs) that's awesome yeah uh i just had a question that i just oh uh so these rules you guys set have you guys ever have you guys talked about maybe just like removing those rules and inserting you know uh different like a different almost type of challenge or I don't know what to call it. I mean, I think we've thought about it and mm-hmm. yeah, we just, we're still. I, Actually that very first, those very first collaborations we did for the dialogues with Emilio show at uh, modern Eden, we used the oblique strategies deck. Oh, right. The yeah. Brian, Brian, Eno, Peter Schmidt, they have this deck of a hundred cards with aphorisms okay. that are just prompts that, are almost non sequiturs Mm -hmm. and we use those to, um, you know, there'll be things like, yeah. Um, identify something essential and eliminate it. Uh Hmm. Ooh, how do you do that in the context of the painting? So those were obscure and a a little more challenging, but that Mm -hmm. was how we actually first started thinking about a prompt. Totally. Mm -hmm. I think that was like our intro to this. Mm -hmm. That was like, I think the idea to limit our palette to begin with, um and uh then we ended up going with this route but i feel like now if we reintroduce those cards i'd be i'd be i feel like it would actually work better for what we, or we would find a little bit more use in them in yeah the just like we did with the dice the die totally. today yeah. you know did Absolutely. we talk about that i can't remember yeah i think we did mm-hmm. right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah like we did rolls for the amount of mm-hmm. strokes that we could do right, or um, flip the painting yeah. right um so there's little things that we like you know spice it up a little bit <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we, I've been, I mean, I've been happy with this method so far, but I'm sure, you know, just like anything else, there's going to be evolution or progress. Like, mm-hmm. as, if not, then we're just, then we end up just repeating ourselves in a way. Right. Um, well, even with the black and uh, white. So that's, that's, you no, know, it's just two totally. colors. And yeah. We can try it with two different colors and I see think how these that goes. subtle mm-hmm. changes is really cool, um, especially when it's not just you. It's really sort of, I mean, we do both come up with ideas so it, and somewhat it, it's not this, it's like a little bit of a i don't i don't want to use the word democracy but you know it has to be just like in a band where it's not like we're using black and white today right it's like <laughs> uh you know it's like what do you think about this you know and then uh usually we all we always just say yes to almost everything it's mm-hmm. not like you know we're just open for whatever um and you know if i'm feeling like we maybe need to just do something to change i i have a feeling that you're probably thinking the same it's not like you know we're we're both in it together so it's it's been a uh, very uh in sync totally yeah we've been we've been uh f- you know painting together so i think that the the evolution and all those things that arrived to we've been very similar on i think in terms of that the only difference i think is that you live with the paintings so you, I do get to look at them a lot. She, more, yeah. yeah, you see them all the time, whereas I come back to them. And uh, I think that's definitely a big change. I mean, it could be a difference right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. It'd be different, I think, if I had them the whole time. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, you guys' pro- project, I don't know what to call it. Yeah, um, project's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Her, like, um, it's like all like anxiety ridden if I ever did any oh, of this yeah. stuff. No, I, yeah, I mean, it was, I don't know. It was just, 
they it's like what i keep saying they just they are what they are you know yeah. it's like there's nothing that we can really do about it because of the the restrictions we put on ourselves right. it's not like you know if there's something you want to fix you, like i mean i have i don't know if, i mean i think it's like a, a chess you know there's like those uh, those chess masters that go around and play like 20 people at a time uh, mm -hmm. and they come back around like if you were to paint <laughs> on them during the week I would know for sure you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would never do that no, no I know but it's one of those things where like these you know they are very abstract or whatever but uh, mm -hmm. it's it's something that could only happen that's right in this process like if Tamsin were to work on them on her own and make like three, you know, vertical, horizontal mm -hmm. and diagonal, like it wouldn't work the same because we've never done repetitive marks or, or se sequential with, you know, we've always alternated. We haven't. Yeah. You know, and I like, feel like we would know and right. then everybody else would too. For like sure. I do think there, yeah. the, you know, anything you make with your hands has you in it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're honest and you're not, cheating and bending the rules that it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna look pure yeah yeah and then pretty soon you can do like the chess masters and you can call it your yeah. mark and then the other person can do it <laughs> right. L7, bishop to L7. <laughs> it'd be pretty interesting to see like if someone else I, you know in a sense like um you know if, if someone else were to try this you know the same sort of idea you know it would be of completely different for uh, sure painting yeah, even just the idea that you guys are working so like harmonious, like in my head, if I had to do this, it would be tension riddled. So it's like mm -hmm. that alone would I think, yeah, create I think, something different. I think there was uh well, I feel like there was a lot of politeness in the in the early stages for mm -hmm. sure of like you know we we like were forced to not say anything and then we just right. like trained ourselves to like trust the other person and mm -hmm. trust the process and kind of go with it and or like Chippendale. No, no, after you. No, 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 after you. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the difficult, like, not even, it's not even difficult, but like, you know, like, it's like, okay, who starts? Right. You know, every day it's like, all right, do I go first? You want to go first? No, no, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. and then that's it. And then right. we just go from there. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, we just, uh, there's always going to be things that sort of, change it up and make add little quirks to the pieces and whatnot whether it's the timing of when we decide to stop on one piece and work on another piece when we introduce color that's you know saturated desaturated all it's all a call and response to mm -hmm. something um and those things you can't fake you know i mean it, or not uh fake but you can't reproduce or it, it's a very in the moment thing being right. here on this day in the conversation we're having with the experiences that we already had during the week, mm -hmm. it's impossible not to bring in the baggage of, of our, uh, you know, of our week or whatever, whether it's visual aesthetic or whatever to into the painting. Cause even though I'm working on my own works at home, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm starting to think about the collaboration and I'm thinking about what kind of things we could do to finalize the paintings but then when we come when i show up here we're not finalizing anything it's just we're just painting and i think that's what's beautiful about it you know it's this very pure thing for yeah. now you know <laughs> um and i think the only reason we would want to refine them or finalize them is because we're putting them up in a show mm -hmm. do you know what i mean then there's a little bit of that outside pressure maybe but it i don't think it's really getting to us at all at the moment um and I, I was comparing this uh, with uh, my friend and I. We were making music f for about a year, maybe or half a year, uh, and all of a sudden there was talks of us like playing a show, right? And we're like, "Oh crap! Now we need actual songs. Like, what the hell? Are we gonna, <laughs> like, what the hell are we gonna do? We just we just jam." And then our sessions turned into how do we write songs? We had no idea how mm. to write songs, you know, and it just changed the work completely. Right. Mm -hmm. um, from like you know 10 minute guitar noodling songs to like okay how do we make a two minute song of that it's right. like you can't you can't like there's no way that you're going to experience what you experience in a 10 minute in 10 minutes and two it's mm -hmm. just you know you can get uh cliff notes or whatever you know like little 
on it, on right. a, a version of the song of the 10 minute, but it's, you're not going to get in the same headspace right? and it's not going to be the same experience. And I think that's, what's cool about these, these works is that, you know, the, um, you know, right now there's a very, uh, well, I think there's a, a trend of immediacy in a lot of works, I'm not saying that people don't spend time on their works, but you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff you see online and it's people churning work out and left and right. And, you know, there's, doesn't seem like there's that much, uh, uh, I don't know. I think I, I haven't seen like the, uh, I've seen a lot of work that feels like very immediate. Um, and, you know, trying to get some sort of instant impact, you know, right. like, or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, uh, you know, we're, we're not intentionally trying to be away, uh, get away from that, but maybe a little subconsciously just mm -hmm. trying to do something that's not that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, overall yeah. it's been really refreshing and, and fresh and, uh, uh, pure so far. So it's been, it's been such an awesome experience and yeah, I hope they, uh, the works like really, uh, represent that somewhat, if not, you know, once they kind of like figure out what, what we've been doing and stuff. And I think it'll really resonate and, uh, and if, and if it doesn't, that's okay too. You know, it is very, that's what I was saying back, going back to like, it is just us, you know, it's that, working for right. us. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it's been so awesome. So it'd be rad if people <laughs> be a bonus. Totally. Yeah. It would be a little <laughs> bonus if people like, like it or whatever. When you would like, uh, if you pursued showing the work to be viewed, would you pursue the same avenues where you would show your own work or would you find somewhere that maybe if their audience seems like that would appeal to them more would you pursue that more or would you i mean i think for me it's it would be anywhere anywhere because mm -hmm. like we really i think our first the first people we'd want to see the work would be our friends right right um when like why wouldn't our friends understand it mm -hmm. in a way where like our friends you know they're our friends so we can we have conversations with them and i feel like they'd see little moments and mm -hmm. they'd you know, they'd be like, oh, what are Tamsin and Emilio up to or whatever, you right. know? And like, they've been painting together for an entire summer right. like on Sundays or whatever. Like, let's see what's happening. So it'd be more of a, you know, celebration of mm -hmm. the of the work or whatever. And right. it'd be a fun time. Like you said earlier, it'd be a good good time to get everyone together and, and exactly. talk. And, you know, conversations at art galleries are completely different mm -hmm. than conversations at a music show or, right. or uh a dinner or whatever, you know, it's, it's just another, uh, wrench in Correct. the, uh, in the normal or the routine or whatever. Yeah. I, the only reason I ask that question is, is, is because I feel like there is this weird thing where, um, this weird expe expectation from people that are fans of your work where they expect something. And a lot of times if someone decides to change things up, you might get, and like you, th there might be outrage from these people that are love your work, and and it's like that uh, Garth Brooks thing, you know, where he like made like albums as like a alternate person, and when people found out, they were like furious. It's like, right. but he's trying to do something he loves. Oh yeah, I'm not trying to call you guys Garth Brooks. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, but I mean, you think about Philip Guston, and mm -hmm. I mean, people were outraged right. or de Chirico when he stopped doing what had made him, you know, this famous surrealist. Right. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean, you, and so I don't think either of us is not doing what we do as individuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, Emilio is still like completely rocking and rolling right. on his, on his path. And mm -hmm. so this is more of a, uh, a, a side project mm -hmm. totally. exploration as opposed to a right. replacement or a transition right. but i think if you're going to make work you have to make what inspires you if it doesn't right. inspire you then it's why are you doing you chose this job because you right. wanted to really for sure constantly for sure. feel amazed that you get to to work in this way and so mm, for sure uh and I, I, you know, I have to say, I think that there is this like trust and confidence aspect to this endeavor that we've talked about, which mm -hmm. I think does pervade to just, you know, this, if this feels right, then it's right. It's like someone saying, you know, you shouldn't date that person, right. you know, uh -huh. if you feel like, you know, I feel amazing with this person, it's great, then 
you know better than anybody else. Right. And you have to take the long road. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not totally, you know, that I we're was not going to say that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like decades of good work ahead. So at some point, something better change or else it's going to be pretty boring for everybody. So, you know, it's good. This right. is actually a really, I think, constructive and also safe way to stretch different muscles and cross train without stopping the, the main race in a sense. Yeah, it hasn't. Yeah, it's it's um, it's very like low impact weight, like right. Like mm -hmm. we're just starting. We're like we're we're starting to work these muscles out, and mm -hmm. we have this like you know we're we're not starting out with like three hundred pounds on the on the machine, you know, whatever. We're like just just right. the machine. It's like we got these little. We got six machines to work on right now. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zero pounds, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're just doing rep repetitive motion, and we're like learning. Mm -hmm. right now it's very Getting fun muscle memory. and yeah. ex it's fresh you know there's mm -hmm. it definitely sparks different uh aspects of it but again going back to what you were saying it's like right now the reason i'm not or we're not stressing on anything but the project in terms of like whether they look good or how mm -hmm. people are going to really uh receive them is because of the for me the long road of it mm -hmm. like i i love putting time into things and being patient with with uh, things and letting them grow and and facilitating that growth like right. i'm not in it for the immediacy of it you know what i mean like the it's it is the journey of it mm -hmm. but you know i'm not over here for just an hour trying to get something going you know and right uh you know both of us i feel like we're very particular with how we spend our time and it's not like you know i'm not forced to be here she's not forced to be here we want to be here and and uh you know really respect that you're spending the time to work on them with me and and uh you know we have we're very busy everyone's busy yeah. in sf i guess you know trying to pay rent or whatever but mm -hmm. uh you know time is value time is like the most valuable thing for most people i feel sure. like that um and you know being able to you know choices that we make and how we spend the time and you know you've always you, you guys know i'm sure if you have to be somewhere you don't want to be it's like the worst <laughs> Worst feeling in the world. So. For sure. Yeah. Do, do you find that you guys being artists and kind of having these skills you guys built, whether it be like music or poetry or painting, that you guys, with this like new thing where you're trying to learn, like teach yourself these skills, is there a learning curve that you feel like is able to kind of move at a pace that is faster than like a 10,000 hour type ordeal? Um, or like you have a head start on i think because we both paint it's a heck of a lot easier yeah. like we don't yeah, we kind of know like what we're doing at, yeah at ground zero or whatever you know we mm -hmm. definitely have our experiences from we know how to hold a brush we know how to, right you know we know mm -hmm. how to mix uh mm -hmm. so there's definitely things that we're learning right. but you know it's i don't think we got in it to relearn how to paint or anything like that it's definitely facilitating and uh right i mean you know relearning how to paint this way right. is but it's not like like ooh, like I don't know what an, experimenting with. Right. It's not like the first time cracking open a tube or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow, what, there's oil in here. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do you find having two people kind of attacking this this new project as a, another thing that helps, or is that something where it's a learning curve in that realm that might be a slower process? Oh, um, I don't know. It's just a very unique process to this. You know, it's uh -huh. it's not. You know, it's not about learning faster or slower. You right. know, I'm sure if we did this every day, obviously, I think that has more to do with it than mm -hmm. anything. You know, this summer has definitely been busy just in, outside of painting. So I've, it's not like we hit every Sunday. You know, right. we, we definitely go. We've been four weeks or three weeks without painting or meeting. And then we finally right. meet together and it's like, ah, oh, yes, like, let's let's do this. Right. And so it's been it's been uh, amazing that way. But yeah, it hasn't been every single Sunday. You know, again, I think if it was that strict and at times we're we're just not that's just not what we're we're about really i, I feel mm -hmm. like it's not saying it's not when we serious get to do it we're usually stoked because it's been a little while and for we're, sure we're down for it if if we had to do this all the time i think we'd you know it, it would it would slow down maybe it would slow something. down or it would just feel a little bit different I right. mean, it's like it's kind of feels like a special treat like oh it's sunday and there's nothing else i have to do i mean we painted for five hours before you guys got here it's yeah. a long time to, yeah. for sure um and it was awesome that's awesome yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I mean, time is important. So. <laughs> As you were saying, yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for time, mm-hmm. for your guys' time. Well, we really thank you guys. It. It's been yeah. super awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, if anyone wants to see your guys' work on Instagram, they can find you at, mm-hmm. isn't it just Emilio? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm at Emilio Vialba. Is it a Instagram? dash in there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Under, uh, what Underscore. Is that? Underscore, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And yours isn't Tam. Yours it's, isn't your name. Right? I think it's Slipstreamer. Slipstreamer. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Eleven. And, and your post- is it Slipstreamer? I was trying to remember. If there's a Slipstreamer Eleven. Okay. <laughs> is it Spinal <laughs> Tap? <you know? laughs> uh, I don't. I think Slipstreamer was taken. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and is it Eleven for like the ten, the volume Eleven? Exactly. <laughs> okay. nice. When you need a little push over the edge. <laughs> and your poetry book is. So uh, the first one is Word Cave. Uh huh. And uh, the second one is Between First and Second Sleep. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So go check those out. Mm-hmm. And you guys are going to have a show. Yeah, at, a, at Adobe Books. Uh, well, it's Adobe. Tamsin's uh, solo show. And then uh, the last week we'll have the collaborative works up or towards the end. Uh, or the closing night, closing reception, right? We'll ch- yeah, we'll do... Uh, I guess it's still kind of up in the air. But. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But probably the artist talk in the middle of November mm-hmm. and then... Also the closing. Yeah, we've been posting some, some of these works on, on... I've been posting them on my other account, too. I have, a, like, a side account, um, Elmo84, or underscore 84. And, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, we'll be posting some of these for sure on there. Awesome. Um, All right. And I think you've posted a few of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been, yeah, yeah, they've just been little... You know, it, w- until you know when they're done, you're kind of not sure. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah we've been posting works in progress every week, and, uh, you know... It's it's cool to go back to those two and and I see know. like I'm like oh man maybe we should have left that. it at I know that's the three, right. three marks in but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cool. awesome maybe a stopwatch that might be yeah, a good that, that might be fun. a good uh, <laughs> be discipline worth trying, yeah <gasps> uh, mm-hmm. awesome well thank you guys so much cool thank you guys uh, this mm-hmm. is Wayne Dry if you're still listening fuck off <laughs> <laughs> cool fun thank you guys. That was awesome. Yeah, that was super fun. Yeah. Easy peasy.